I ended my aggravated commentary yesterday with reference to the most recent military operation in the Congo called Kimya 2. Kimya 2 was launched in the middle of this year with the intention of rooting out and destroying the genocidalists who had been responsible for the genocide in Rwanda and fled into the jungles of the Congo after 1994. Of all the marauding bands, they were considered to be the most merciless and the people most medieval-like in their pillaging and raping. Kimya II was comprised of federal Congolese forces in conjunction with United Nations peacekeepers who were providing logistical support, something the UN had never done before. It turned out to be a colossal error in judgment. Kimya II was doomed before it got underway and the United Nations was swept into something that could only be described as unutterable folly. The Congolese army units, reckless and undisciplined, have, according to Human Rights Watch and many independent observers, been nearly as murderous as the genocidalists they were pursuing, both groups then preying equally on the civilian population, and hundreds of thousands of people fled within the Congo in order to escape the brutality and sexual violence of the two marauding armies. Now, as it happens, in August of this year, my co-director and I visited the eastern region of the Congo, the war-torn region, and every single NGO with whom we met said that Kenya too was a disaster. But the United Nations peacekeeping forces were committed to it, as militaries get committed. And the highest echelons of the UN, the special representative of the Secretary General, a fellow named Alan Doss, wouldn't listen. They never listen. But here's the rub. Kimya II was sanctioned by the United Nations Security Council. They demanded it. They supported it. In August of this year, Hillary Clinton visited the war-torn region and expressed bemoaned concern for the horror for the women. And then the United States promptly supported the operation which bestowed the horror upon the women. That's the painful truth. The greater truth is that this war on women continued unabated throughout 2009. Alan Doss should be removed. So should the Under Secretary General for Peacekeeping Operations. They've done enough damage to last a lifetime. I'll deal with the third episode in this saga tomorrow. I'm Stephen Lewis.